everybody. Today I want to show you how to prime MDF and sort of talk about, you know, how to keep your canvases looking good and how to have the right primer on them. Just the basics to start off with. Um, that's Teddy and that's uh, Wilson. Wilson, say hello. <laughs> okay, so come over here maybe, this way, come behind me here. Okay. So we've got a tiny little uh, MDF board that you get from Bunnings here. I'm not sure what it's called overseas. Um, we, we actually call it craft board, but um, people also call it MDF. Um, this is five mils thick, and you can get a three mil thick one. And normally with your smaller canvases the size, or your smaller boards, sorry, you would go for the three mil. On your larger boards, you would go for the five mil because you don't want them to warp. But one way to stop them from warping is to prime both sides of the actual board. So here I've got two different gessos, um, a white one and a black one. So sometimes it's really nice to prime it black and it can go straight black. Um, but you know, for most um, people, you'll be doing a white canvas. So there are different ways of doing it. You can cut these into big boards and roll your paint on with a roller, just like you paint a wall, and you do about three different coats. Or you can just paint it as you would anything, and then you can see how I can also create texture with my um, brush strokes. There is another way to create texture, and this is called whiting powder. You can add that into your gesso, and create a much thicker uh, texture. Um, and then what you could do is get a little scrubbing brush, I don't have one here, or a brush with a lot of, a lot of um, hard bristles, and you can move your brush around to create a texture. Now, I um, don't know if I've got a canvas, I'll have a look at it. Where's the lid for this? Okay, all right. So I've put my first layer of um, gesso on this little board and in actual fact, the first layer can just be flat paint or as I say, can be rolled on. Um, and, and now I've added a bit of the whiting powder to the gesso and you can see that this is a little bit thicker and more textured, okay? So I'm really creating that little bit of uh, textured paint here. So. I'll add this on. So how how do you decide what to do in terms of that textured layer? Uh, you just have to experiment. Okay. Um, you know, the thicker you want it, the more um, whiting powder you'll put in. I don't have a particular formula, but I'll just play with the texture to see what I can get. So. When would you use that though? Um, I've got a ballerina painting downstairs that um, I wish I could show you, but I can't. And that is a very delicate painting with some beautiful texture in it that I have created the tulle of the skirt from. Um, I might be able to find a photo of that to I illustrate. But I've done, with that I've done this particular, can you actually see that texture? Yes. I've done this particular texture, and once that's dry, I'll show you what happens to paint when you paint over the top this of it. It's um, an acrylic gesso, all the gessos are acrylic, and you get different kinds. The Art Spectrum has a, um, a gesso that I use, but you have to get an artist quality gesso. A student quality gesso will make your surface very chalky, and it sucks in the paint, and it's not very fun. So make sure when you use gesso, use a artist quality gesso. Now, what you can do is you can actually use a semi-gloss house paint to prime your boards, okay? So you would do two or three coats of that and then you could put your, um, your textured gesso on the top. Or you can just paint on the house paint. So you can do that. Uh, gesso can be quite pricey. But gesso is great because you can paint on anything. So you could paint on... Uh, 600 gram watercolor paper, gesso it, and then you can oil paint on that. Cardboard, 
anything you paint the gesso, anything you put the gesso on, you can actually oil paint over the top. Um, there are some surfaces that you're going to need a different kind of bonding material, and there's a bonding material called ESP that you can use to put on metal or uh, glass or anything like that if you want to oil paint onto other surfaces. But gesso is the one we use for um, our boards and mat boards, and it's a really cheap way of getting a really lovely um, surface. So what happens if you just paint straight on the board? Um, well, first of all, your paint doesn't move very nicely across the board. Uh, the board will absorb the paint and it's not um, acid free. So if you put um, your primer, you're preventing that chemical reaction and the paint gets to adhere to the primer. It may not adhere to the board as well. So um, you have to prime it. Okay guys, so just showing you a little bit of the difference in some surfaces we can use. Now this here is foam core. Foam core has a sticky side to it. So what we've done is just placed this canvas on top of that sticky side, stuck it down using the sticky side of the foam core, and then just cut it around the edges. It's really light. So when you're plain air painting or you're going away overseas on a painting trip or anything, this is a very nice light surface. It's not gonna make your weight on your back. Um, that's a really good option. This is just your normal three mil craft board. And this has got a very slight texture on it. Um, there's no whiting powder in this. It's just gesso. Here we have your normal stretched canvas. You don't want to be traveling with something like this because you've got the weight of the, um, the wood. So, but this is nice for studio work. And then here is a little a bigger version of craft board. That's your, your that would be more than five uh, mils. That's probably about seven mils. Anyway, um, here are some linen. This is your normal 12 inch canvas over here. This would be your linen, and linen has a completely different um, surface. These are oiled, oil primed linen. And I absolutely love painting on linen because it does something different with the color. The color seems to really pop off linen. So you can actually see these are a few paintings I've done um, on this linen. So did you paint it white before you started? So or? no, it was primed already. You buy it okay. already primed. And then what's great is that I did these paintings when I went up north. What's great is that you can just um, take them to a board and then roll them up when you've finished. And often when you're traveling and you want to do larger canvases, this is, this is a great way to go. So, and your quality of your surface also um, plays a big role into, into the, the, the style you paint and, and how your painting ends up. So here you can see we've got a, a canvas that looks unprimed. This is a linen, but it's actually primed with an acrylic gesso. This is the painting that I've done on it. And sometimes having this color behind here is really nice because it's a medium gray. So you're not working on a white canvas um, because white tends to make your colors look darker. So when you're putting things on a white canvas, your colors appear darker and it's difficult to get your tones right. That's why a lot of artists will prime their camp, will, will actually um, tone their canvas different Tones. I know Soroya always used a sort of an orangey um, tone for his um, boards. I know a lot of artists will work on a coloured surface rather than on a white canvas. So um, that's the that's the so you can actually buy the transparent gesso and um, pri and prime your own um, unprimed canvases as well. You can also get these um, canvas boards canvas panels that you buy from art shops and these are fine to practice on. My favorite one is the Friedrichs. The Friedrichs is primed beautifully and has a beautiful surface. There's nothing worse than buying a canvas and your paint, your, your paintbrush and your paint just do not move across it. And a lot of the cheaper surfaces will do that and then you just go, what is going wrong? Um, and that's why buying cheap materials 
can actually be so counterproductive in your in your journey. It may save you a few cents in the beginning, but it just causes so much frustration that you might want to give up. So I would definitely spend money on getting the right brushes, on um, buying the right artist materials like artist oil colors rather than student brands. Um, obviously, if you're doing big abstract works and you're throwing paint around, you know, then you can experiment with whatever you want. But when you're looking to do traditional painting methods, you really do need to, even if you just buy the six primary colors and white, you can mix any color from those. Those are your series four paints. They're expensive and last a long time.